Hey everybody, good evening. James here from allamericanguardian.com. Tonight I am going to show you a little program called FileZilla. Sort of like Godzilla, excuse me, Godzilla, but for files, okay? FileZilla. It's a strange name, but I've never forgot it since day one because it is a unique name. It's easy to say and it's kind of fun. FileZilla. Oh, by the way, just want to show you guys this. This is my signature mug that I'm I can't believe I haven't showed y'all this yet, but it says, I don't need Google. My wife knows everything. And if you knew my wife, you would totally agree. So, um, FileZilla, what it is, is an FTP program. It's FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And what that means in detail, I don't know. I just know what it stands for, and I know what it does. <clears throat> but File Transfer Protocol, what File Transfer, Transfer Protocol is, is a way to transfer files to and from computers. So your local computer, the one that's in front of you right now, your um, it could be your phone or most likely your laptop or whatever. In front of me is my laptop. If I need to get files from my laptop to my website or the server where my website is basically to that hosting, um, I can do that via FTP. I can do a FTP connection and I can send large files or large amounts of files pretty quickly considering the size of the files. Um, when you have WordPress there is a, a, a feature to upload certain files like um, pictures and videos and stuff like that and also themes. You can install themes through the theme um, uploader but sometimes these themes, especially when you buy premium themes that have a lot of features, um, they're going to be very large files. And so I prefer to upload that kind of stuff using FTP. And so that's why I'm talking about it tonight is because the previous video I did yesterday, I was talking about how to choose a theme for WordPress. I think actually my last two videos were, were concerning WordPress themes. So let's just go to... Um, I guess it's going to be hard for me to uh, show you how to download a theme unless I can find one that's free. Maybe I can do that because I don't really remember my login right now for some of these sites because I just haven't downloaded a theme um, in months and months and months. So <clears throat> let's just see if there's any free themes on one of these. Aha, free themes. Okay. So there's one called Simple, iTheme 2, Basic. Let's go with this iTheme 2. All right. So when you go to purchase a theme, and this is after you've done all the vetting of the theme. So to vet it out, remember, we're going to go over things and make sure that there's lots of options for colors and, and layouts because that's going to save you a lot of time and effort um, to help you out with your design. Um, making sure that there's good support for the theme, making sure that there's um, <clears throat> making sure that it's mobile responsive so that it can be easily viewed on any device from an iPhone to an Android to a tablet to a laptop. So there's all those little things that I went over in the previous videos that you're going to make sure um, your theme is in alignment with in alignment with prior to purchasing. But when you actually get to the purchasing process and you you're going to have to download that theme, okay? So it's going to download to your local computer. So I'm just going to hit um, download free theme. It says no support. So let's see there. When you don't pay for things, you don't get support because support costs money. So once that theme is downloaded, now it's actually on my computer. Um, click out of that. So now I've got to find a way to get it over to my website. So I'm going to go to FileZilla, I don't even know if it's FileZilla.com, nope, it's FileZilla-Project.org, okay, so if we just search FileZilla on Google, you'll come up with the, uh, the particular program. What you're going to click on is, I believe it's, I would do this one here, oh, no, I think it's this one. Let's make sure, there's a, file, a download FileZilla client and a download FileZilla server. I believe this is the one you want, is the FileZilla client, because it says all platforms, okay? So you're gonna download that, 
and then install it just like you would any other program it's pretty I mean it walks you through but there's actually a lot of um, screenshots and documentation on how to do that um, I don't want to do that right now because I've already got it installed and I don't I thought about possibly deleting the one that I have installed like uninstalling it so that I can redo it for y'all to show you but I've got clients and some of my sites already loaded in there with all the the correct information and I really don't want to delete that stuff so um, anyhow you're gonna download FileZilla it's completely free that's what's awesome and they come out with updates all the time it'll it's just you know one click update so it's very easy so once you download that you get it installed now you're gonna open up FileZilla so I am going to click off this for just a second we're gonna click on the shortcut to open up FileZilla and I'm going to just make it my whole screen so you don't have to look at all my, I don't even know what I have on there, a bunch of different um, shortcuts. So from here, we're going to, once you get FileZilla installed, you're going to open it up. Okay. You're going to click on file up here in the top left hand corner. You're going to go to site manager and yours will be blank. I've got some stuff loaded in this one, but um, you're going to click on, actually I'm going to do new site. And you're just going to name the site. So for mine, for the testing, it's allamerican.site. And you can name this whatever you want, but it's just going to be something so that you know what website you're actually connecting to. And there's a couple other things you're going to have to fill out. One is the host. And the other one here, I usually go to normal. You're going to have to fill out a username and a password. And this host name is going to be an IP address. I don't even know the IP addresses for my websites off the top of my head. So this is typically what I do. I go to find website IP. I just search that. Okay. Click on the first one that comes up. And then I go allamerican.site. And there we go. Okay, this is the IP address right here. That's the IP address for my website that we're doing the testing on. So I'm just going to want to copy that. And then we're going to open back up FileZilla. Where to go? And we're going to paste that here where it says host. There we go. Now I've got a username. And this username and password is going to be the username and password that you use to log into your cPanel. Okay, it's the same username and password. So, um, and I think for this, I actually didn't make it a very secure one. And this is just a test site. By the time most people see these videos, this site's going to be deleted. So, I'm um, not really worried about it. But um, I want to say it's just all American. Let's see. Let's see if this will connect. Okay, so I've got. Here where it says host, I have my IP address, which I just showed you how to look up for your website. Um, username uh, is what you're going to use to log into your cPanel and the same password that you log into cPanel. I'm going to click connect and just hit OK. And boom, it worked. So that was correct. OK, um, you should see files show up here on the right hand side. So basically. The left hand side of your screen over here is your your laptop or whatever that you're on your desktop computer. The right side of the screen is the website, the server that you're connecting to. So these are all files that are over on my website. Um, what you can click into right here, you see this www or either the public HTML. I typically click on the www. This will bring up the actual um, files installed on the on the front end of your website on the root directory so right here we can see all this WP this is all WordPress files so if we had not installed WordPress this would be pretty empty there'd only be a couple of little things in here okay the CGI bin would be in here but um, all of most of these files that are, in, that are in here are WordPress files so I am going to take the file that I downloaded so we're going to go to downloads and I've got to go find that file. I don't even remember what it was called. Um, should have cleaned some of this out before I did all this. Let's do this. 
Let me go back. This is totally on the fly, off the cuff stuff here, guys. So I, I didn't really plan and try to make this all nice and pretty for you guys. I just really just logged in and started shooting this video because um, I know what I'm doing. But when I don't plan it out, you know, it may take me a couple extra minutes. Okay, so when we downloaded this theme, let's see what it was called. Actually, oh, it's still sitting right there. Something theme two. Okay, I theme two. We'll go to search. I theme. Boom. And that should pull it up. Or you know what I can do? Let's go into documents and let's go into websites and let's go into all american guardian and let's do eh, blog images let's just throw it in here so i can find it for now i'm gonna try to grab this no that's not gonna work is it ah there it is okay it found it the search was still happening Okay, so it's in downloads under iTheme 2. Let's try to move this into blog images. This is going to take a few minutes here. Okay, so basically, while that's taking a few minutes to move over into that, because, and you see why it's taking so long, I'm copying one theme and it says copying 535 items. That means there's 535 files in that theme. And that's just a free theme, okay? Some themes can have thousands of, of files that make up the whole theme because there's a lot of images in there and there's a whole lot of code that makes that theme do all the cool stuff that it does, um, both on the front end and the back end where you administer um, from your dashboard. So, wow, 535 files and it's still um, still transferring there. So yeah, that and this is why you want to use FileZilla. When you transfer this to your actual website, I'm going to show you where you're going to go, okay? Um, on the left-hand side here on your computer, you're just going to go to wherever that file is stored. And so for me, let me see if I can find it here. This thing's always in weird, like a weird order. I need to... Boom, boom, maybe file type, no, nope. last modified, haha, no, nope. my documents, no, nope. documents, hmm, yeah, this is, I'm going to pause the video for just a second while I check this out. Okay, so um, I finally figured out where I needed to go on my PC, on my uh, laptop here. So you're just going to go find the theme, which it's right here. Okay, I've highlighted it. So this is on my local computer where I've downloaded the file to. I put it into a, a, a file where I can find it now, so I know how to get there. On the right-hand side... We are going to navigate over to wp-content folder. Okay, it's right here. All you can see is wp-cont. It's wp-content. When you roll over it, you're going to double click it. You're going to double click on themes. And these are the themes that are already loaded into our WordPress installation. So now we're just going to add a folder. And we're going to right click on this iTheme 2 on our left hand side of the screen and we're going to hit upload. And we're just going to hit always trust certificate in future sessions, hit OK. And there it goes, OK. It's uploading. You can see down here in the left hand corner of the uh, screen how many files were queued up. And it started at the 535, it's already down to 400. These files, successful transfers, 88 files. We're at 100 files. And any that fail to transfer for any reason will show up here. But this is just constantly transferring the files one after another in rapid succession. So I kind of want to just leave it there and let them go just so you can see how long it takes. It really doesn't take very long considering it's 535 files. So as you can see, um, 
the name of the folders already showed up over here, but it doesn't have the other information yet. And typically I just hit overwrite on these. Sometimes it will find a double file in there. If it's the same exact file, I'll just hit always use this action, leave it on overwrite, hit OK. Once in a while that will show up. Almost done with this video, guys. I could have made this video a lot shorter, but I really wanted to show you exactly how to get this um, theme, all these files transferred over. It says transfer is finished. So what, that took maybe two minutes from the time that I started to the time it ended. I think maybe even less than two minutes. Okay, so now... It says right here, iTheme2, it's got all the files there. If we click on that, it's going to show you all the different files in that theme. So we're going to get out of FileZilla. We're going to get out of Themeify. That's my website. But we're going to go to the test site, allamerican.site slash wp-admin. And I am going to log in. And just show you that that theme is now there. We go to appearance, we go to themes, and there it is Themeify iTheme2. We can activate it. And now this one even has uh, demo content that we saw over on the other site, on the Themeify site. It's got all this demo. Uh, default content that you can import and make it look just like the demo and then you can go in there and change it out so I'm gonna hit import yes hit OK this might take a few minutes it says would you like to import the demo content to have the exact look as our demo okay and then there's all types of settings in here okay you see here on the left now themify it's got different Settings, layouts, layout parts, customized documentation, and more themes. And then within each of those, it's got all these different things that we can customize in here. And so this kind of takes a while. And I'm probably not going to show you all exactly how to do all this. Um, I can't show you with every theme. I can maybe show you with one theme and we can go through and talk about different things. But these themes are different. Like every single brand of themes so themeify uh, studio press elegant themes they all have different ways that these back-end settings are configured and so they're all going to look a little different in your dashboard and when even when i'm working on a new site for somebody if i haven't worked with that particular theme designer yet um, for whoever's website i'm working on a client of mine i kind of have to go in there and learn where everything is laid out and how to get to everything so I know a lot more about these than most people just because I've dealt with so many websites with hundreds and hundreds of websites over the years. But it's still a learning curve for me. So definitely for you, the first time logging in and doing all these settings, it is going to be a bit of a learning curve. You just need to take your time and go through each one step by step. And if you have questions about any of these, you be sure and leave me a message in the comments below here on YouTube. Make sure and hit the subscribe button. And if you're on my blog, you can leave a comment there as well. Um, a really easy way to leave a comment on my blog is to be logged into Facebook and then it will already show up with your little Facebook um, icon with your picture there. So until next time, I will see you on the next video. Have a great evening. All American Guardian, keeping vigil watch over your business website.